Welcome to the second episode of the Fuck You Podcast. I'm your host, Calvin the Ninja, a.k.a. Harrison, and I'm here to talk about something I kind of hinted at back in my first podcast. Uh, like I said, this is basically whatever the fuck I want to talk about, whenever the fuck I want to talk about it. Um, and today, it's going to be about black nationalism and uh, some of the early civil rights leaders and my lack of activism it seems because I've realized that over the past several years I have really lacked activism now see I have a lot of passion for it I want to do it but I never really have done it I've never gone out and done it uh, especially during the uh, 2020 civil unrest, uh, which I like what I like to call it. Um, mainly because at that point in time, I was in Canada. And in the little town that I was living in at the time, and by little town, you know, it was like 100,000 people, I think. Right? Yeah. Uh, living in that little town, there was only like a small protest that was held for like one day. And no one came out, like, another couple of days, I don't think. Um, if I was down in the down state side, I would have at least attempted to go to a um, larger protest, even during the pandemic, because, fuck it, <laughs> justice isn't going to wait for a pandemic. Um, but I, I've realized that even when I was in university, I... I said I was going to actively engage in uh, with the the political uh, underbelly of uh, my university, but I never really did. I had a lot of surface level political conversations with my friends. Well, I wouldn't even really call them surface level. I would say that we would get pretty deep, but we would never like. There was never any club interaction. There was never any hardcore debate. It always ended in all right, you have your opinion, and I have mine, or we agree on this. It was nothing ever really super confrontational, like, in your face, like, fuck you, motherfucker, you don't believe that LGBTQ rights are are, are fucking valid, you don't think that shit, get the fuck out of my face. It was nothing like that, it was never like that. Um, and I'm glad that a lot of the people I met were not just, <laughs> were, were, were not completely hateful terrible people i'm glad that they were extremely accepting and open-minded uh and it helped me continue being open-minded in university or at least attempt to be when it when it comes to me as a person i'm very it, 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 if i get proven wrong i may admit it i may admit it but if i'm embarrassed i probably won't which is which is extremely funny but um when it comes to um black nationalism which i would consider myself a black nationalist even though i don't go out in uh and protest you would you would probably call me uh in a fence sitter or something like that i i don't know i just never engaged actively i never went out uh into a club to help underprivileged youth in the community in the uh, in the city, I never donated money. Um, I've never done any of that. I'm. It really it makes me realize, hmm, maybe I'm not as for my people as I thought I was, and I, I want to change that, but I I don't really know why I haven't been. I I've listened to and read um i've listened to malcolm x and i've read um some other books and things i've read uh the the what's it called the new jim crow that was very interesting but i think it's it's weird because i never really did search for the um, information now that i think about it for why i hold these views i i think it's because i kind of just followed in the footsteps of my older brother who is uh, who is much more who was much more politically involved than I was 
um, the most politically involved I ever was, was probably arguing in the comments section when I was basically a goddamn neo-Nazi, which is a very dark time in my past that I do not want to go back to. Um, my older brother, I look up to him in many ways, and you will see as this continues on that I believe he's one of my biggest role models and inspirations. So when it comes to my political views and my and my black nationalism, it, it comes a lot from his uh, thoughts on Marxist Len Leninism and, and stuff like that. I would not describe myself as a Marxist Leninist uh, to like a T. I would describe myself as much more of a, a social democrat maybe even just a straight up socialist maybe just a straight up marxist not marxist leninist and um i genuinely do not believe that communism can work in the real world and every time that it has been attempted it has always been dominated by strong men but that is not to say that capitalism is without its flaws and cannot be improved upon and that is also not to say that there is a completely different system that hasn't been created yet that would benefit all people as the saying goes power to the people and all the people which is what i am mainly for i may be a black self-described black nationalist i would also say that it would be fall in line with more of a Fred Hampton sort of uh, view of uh, black nationalism. With black nationalism comes everybody's liberation. Uh, or black liberation comes with everyone's liberation is what I mean. Excuse me. Um, Fred Hampton, I believe, is is extreme is, an, is a role model for what we should be striving for in that leftist society we shouldn't be excluding the whites uh just because they're white and the oppressor we shouldn't be excluding the straights just because they're straight and the oppressor but we need to come together in a manner that uh where we all equally understand that the bad guys are the corporations as well as the fascist tendencies that that the corporations tend to uh, steer the country towards um or even just the fascist tendencies of politicians themselves in the united states um as i would describe the united states um the at least the, the very least the united states foreign policy is a a fascist one a one of expansion control and in holding power and that's why it feels so threatened from china at least that's my that's my thoughts on it but um going back to um fred hampton and that entire little chicago illinois stint of the uh black panthers i recently just finished watching um judas and the black messiah which is a fantastic movie everyone should watch it um lakeith uh, played gr played a great William O'Neill and uh, Daniel Kaluuya Kaluuya right? Please correct me if I'm saying that wrong. I'm terrible with pronunciations or pronunciations, I should say. Um, Daniel also provides a fantastic uh, Fred Hampton, and I think I really understand what we are striving towards. I am not. A believer um I, I do see that some uh african americans are very much so like we are god's chosen people and we should act like it we are the master race kind of con complex going on and i i vehemently disagree with that i am a vehement I, I vehemently disagree with that idea that there is such a thing as a master race because that would imply that we aren't all just specks of dust floating on a fucking ball on a, a mud ball which many religions do uh say but i believe that that you can you can get by without fucking murdering another person for thinking some shit like that uh anyways that that that, that idea is very half-baked and i'm not here to talk about that 
I'm here to talk about black nationalism, which I do believe uh, after the 2020 civil unrest has finally come back when we need it. Well, I can't really say when we needed the most because when we needed it the most was probably before uh, the Civil Rights Act. Um, I I wish that the Civil Rights Movement had continued further past the um just the the the, the passing of the act. And I understand that, that there were some other uh, little key bits and pieces that were spread out through the 70s and the 80s, but a lot of that is just lip service. See, the problem is that following the act, there was no process of re-educating or uh, telling people why it is wrong to hate someone for their skin color which is why the problem keeps on rearing its head today because police officers continue to seemingly base them their, their their view of african americans on a stereotype that was created back in the 60s and it's 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 surprising that it survived this long um and it's taking it's taken so long for people to realize oh shit why why do they think this way what 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 is causing them to perceive another human being in this manner and it, i believe that this this is a answer this is something that could have been answered many years ago if <laughs> if lobbyists had pushed harder on it if the lobbyists had just kept on pushing if the protests had kept on continuing um then i think we would have had a much more equal society and we would not have had had to have had deaths like eric garner or um uh fucking philando castile or god forbid tamir rice which is honestly just a little tangent on tamir rice i was fucking 14 when that kid was killed in Cincinnati, and he was only two years younger than me, when I heard that, I, I died inside. I've never, I've never not been scared of a police officer since. Every time I see him, I was like, mm, I don't trust that motherfucker. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna come up here and just fucking pop me or some shit? It may be irrational, but that doesn't change the fact that it's happened in the past before this kid was just playing in the fucking park with his friends and was about to go home and then the police come up on the fucking pavement on the fucking sidewalk man and just jump out the car and shoot him dead it's like what the fuck it made me realize that wow they don't give a fuck about you and it's really pushed me further and further to this to the side that maybe maybe if we had just kept on pushing maybe if we had just kept on going these people wouldn't have had to die no it's not even a maybe these people wouldn't have died it's not a maybe this this is a matter of fact at this point these people would not have died in this way to po po to police violence if reform had occurred during the 60s when it needed to, to occur. Instead, the government decided that in, instead of trying to change and reform, that they needed to put it down like communist China fucking puts down the Uyghur Muslims today. They decided, all right, we're going to try and kill the black community in any fucking way possible all right how do we do this how do we kill as many black people in the united states as possible you send them to jail you destroy the family unit although there, there is argument that the family unit in of itself is a little bit you know, stupid trying to but but at the time societally you you needed in the 70s you needed someone like a man of the house you needed that person to be the breadwinner you couldn't you you could you can make it as a single mother or a single father but 
the the odds were even more stacked against you than if you were just then because you're already in a pretty shit place you're, you're probably already barely maintaining a home with two parents but when one of them gets sent to jail for a crime that fucking probably didn't didn't warrant them going to jail for that long and giving them a felony so that they can never vote again uh and uh, restricting all their fucking privileges uh that is granted to a normal citizen that could be even deemed as inhumane uh it's very (laughs) interesting let me calm down because i'm i'm going on a little bit of just a tangent i'm just going and going and going i need to calm down i need to stop i need to gather my thoughts you know shuffle the papers around a little bit calm down take a couple deep breaths in breath out (sighs) all right now we're calmed down so what nixon realized is that we aren't sending people back or to the prisons fast enough but at this point nixon's not president anymore but then we get to reagan and reagan finally figures out a surefire way to absolutely destroy the black community and that is crack crack cocaine that shit that absolutely destroyed the black community in the united states who not so united now is it so what (laughs) what i'm trying to say is that what i'm trying to say is that they finally figured out a way to get rid of black people without absolutely overcrowding the uh prison system even though it's still crowded to this day remember there are more prisoners in the united states than in any other country even in fucking china where an entire fucking um what's the word uh cultural group of people are being oppressed and (laughs) re-educated to be more quote-unquote chinese whatever the fuck that means uh the u.s still leads prison population and it's really surprising when you look at that figure two million people in jails or incarcerated i should say it's it's absolutely mind-boggling that you can have so many people in prison and call yourself the free nation the freest nation in the world um it's it really makes you want to break some shit it really makes you want to fucking go outside and shoot your local politician of course we aren't here we here at Cavalry ninja productions do not uh advocate for the murder of politicians unlike some groups in the united states of america hint hint now, see, I've been going on a rant again for about 20 minutes, which I think is pretty, uh, pretty reasonable amount of time. But the, the fact that that Fred Hampton's words can still be used as a rallying cry, how many years later? How many years later? Well, let's count. That's 60, what, 69? So that's 70, 80, 90. The, o- the O-O's, the 10s, 20. That's goddamn near 70 years. That's damn near 70 years later that you are still able to use the words and them still ring true the words of a dead man and still ring true to this day in our current landscape 2021 it's abysmal it's absolutely abysmal (laughs) i guess this is what i should be saying though this is my official uh sign in letter to uh start fighting for justice 
I'm going to be using this platform, although still it's going to be whatever the fuck I want, but whenever I hear an injustice, I will talk about it on here, giving my take and giving what the fuck I want to say about it. Fred Hampton, God bless that man's soul. He has touched my heart and probably millions of other people's hearts as well. Well, this is a little awkward to just end off because all the passion and all the uh, anger that I hold to the United States of America uh, has not really... Well, no, it's been explained. It's been explained. I think you can understand why I do not like this country. I think you can understand why I much prefer it in Canada. Even though Canada has its own fucking problems that I will get into at a later date. But... You understand that this country is fucked. And it's been fucked since its creation. And to say that... At one point, this country was actually pretty fucking awesome. It really just, I don't know when that point would have been. I genuinely don't know. Anyway, that's all, folks. I'm done. My head hurts. My nose is stuffy. <sighs> this has been the Fuck You Podcast. Fuck you. I don't know how coherent this was. I am your host, Calvin the Ninja, a.k.a. Harrison. Good night.